Well, it's a good-looking Wednesday, weather-wise. Good morning. I'm Colin Worthington in the News Talk 1330 FM 106.3 Newsroom. This is the WLBB Community Voice Program. Brought to you by Tanner Health System, Oak Mountain Academy. Time is 829. You know, Harrelson County in the year 2021 will have a new sheriff. There are five people that uh, have qualified for that race, which is coming up next month. Yeah, coming up next month, I believe May the 19th is when that race uh, will be on ballots in Harrelson County. Again, five gentlemen qualifying for that race. One of them, Brian Finley, second Chad Henderson, John Hutchison, Wade Williams, and Stacey Williams. All will be on the ballot. Our guest this morning is one of those gentlemen. His name is Brian Finley, and uh, I'd like to say good morning to him. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Colin. How are you? Well, we're doing all right. Uh, as uh, everybody else, we're trying to shelter in place. And uh, me alone here in the studio, so I do appreciate you accommodating us and letting us do the interview uh, over the telephone this morning. And I'm sure you're safe as well, Hold up somewhere, Hi, whether it's at the Carroll oh. County Sheriff's Office, where uh, you are currently employed as a sergeant. That's correct. And, uh, yes, we're doing good. I appreciate the opportunity to come on. However, I can't believe you want to interview a politician on April Fool's Day. <laughs> April so Fool's good luck Day. with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I did kind of, my eyebrows did kind of lift up when we did, we're working out the day to talk to you. So, uh, but yeah, you, you got stuck with the April, uh, April 1st program. But again, thank you for being on uh, the program this morning. Brian's website is brianfinleyforsheriff.com. You can find additional information there uh, as we do talk to him this morning. And uh, of course, after the program's over. Um, Brian, first of all, tell us, us a little bit about yourself. Give us your resume, your uh, your career in law enforcement. Well, I'd like to start off by saying there's actually two Brian Finley. Uh, we're both from Tallapoosa, and we both work in law enforcement. Uh, the other Brian Finley is a sergeant for Villarica Police Department, and as you said, I'm a sergeant for Carroll County Sheriff's Office. So it gets kind of confusing when I'm out politicking. Uh, people think I'm the other one, and so... Just try to set it straight. There's actually two of us. And he um, seems like a decent enough guy, so it's not going to hurt you. <laughs> he is, yeah. He, he's a pretty good fellow. But I'm married to uh, my wife, Jamie Finley. She's the uh, assistant principal out at Harrison County High School. Uh, together we have five children, and my parents are uh, Kathy Pike and Rodney Finley. But a little bit about my career is I actually started in law enforcement part-time back in 2000 working in the jail of a transport officer and a jailer for Sheriff Ronnie Kimball at Harrison County. And in 2001, I left there and went to work full-time at the old Carroll County Jail. We later transferred over to the new jail. So in 2002, uh, back then, the, the sheriff's office wasn't sending people to mandate school like they do now. So my stepdad and I actually went to... Uh, Sheriff Ronnie Kimball, and he signed for me to go to mandate school. So I sold a truck and saved up enough money and went that's 11 weeks without a paycheck and went through mandate. And right before I graduated, they had a uh, poster out for Mountain Zion Police Department looking to hire some police officers. So I went to work out there for about a year and a half until a deputy with Carroll County called me and wanted to know if I was interested in coming back to work up there as a deputy. So I went up there and started on night shift patrol at, at the sheriff's office and worked. Later, we come on day shift. And for a few years later, then they uh, assigned me to the interstate crime unit and as a canine handler working in addiction. So after a few years of doing that, I got detached out to the uh, Department of Homeland Security, the financial group in Atlanta. We targeted the uh, international drug cartels operating in the Atlanta area. But it didn't take but just a few years of driving in Atlanta traffic and I was ready to come back to Carroll County. So I put in for an investigator's job and one of the investigations. During that time, I worked persons and property crimes and investigated anything from misdemeanor crimes up to murder. I also had a couple murder trials that both were found guilty on and gained a lot of experience in the investigation. And personally, I feel the, the next sheriff, when they, whoever it is, should be able to go up to one of their investigators and ask them where they're at on an investigation of whatever type of case, whether it be a misdemeanor case or child molestation or murder, and know that that investigator is gathering the evidence needed to guilt a guilty conviction on the offender. 
I believe the sheriff should know that the, the, they're doing what's necessary because they've actually worked those type of cases before. So in September, but now I, now yeah. I'm a sergeant within, within our court services, and we uh, supervise court security, transports, warrants, and civil process, which are some major um, responsibilities of a sheriff. So I'd like to thank Sheriff Lang and his command staff because they have been great to me over the years and afforded me opportunities to work in every division within a sheriff's office. Brian Finley. So that's of, a little bit about me. Brian Finley is one of five candidates uh, running for sheriff in Harrelson County. And I appreciate him being the guest on this morning's Community Boys program. We do hope to introduce you to uh, each of the five candidates over the next couple of weeks. On Monday, we uh, introduced you to Stacey Williams. That program is available on the Newstalk1330.com website. Also on the Newstalk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. And this program, when it's done, will be on the website as well. And on the Newstalk 1330 uh, WLBB Facebook page. Um, what are you hearing from people, constituents, potential constituents, when you're out there, you know, talking to them, or when you were out there? Because you're probably not doing a lot of uh, meet and greets at this point. But uh, what were some of the big issues that you were hearing from uh, Harrelson County residents? Yeah, you're right. This uh, coronavirus has slowed down. You know, a lot of the door to door basically stopped the door to door. So, but when out there talking to people, it's, it's the same that you you're hearing about any county you go and talk to, and it's the uh, your drug and theft and uh, speeding is a big problem over here as well. Um, I put a plan out about two years ago when I launched my website, and and, and, I, and I talk about uh, how I'm going to address the drug problem. And to me, it's threefold. You have to go to the, the supply and the demand and the education all at the same time. You can't just target the dealers and ignore the the, the demand or the supply and the demand. You got to get you got to target them all. And some will have a, a crime suppression unit, yeah. and I want to equip them with a canine. I don't understand why we have such a huge drug problem in our county, and we do not have a uh, drug dog. You know, when I was on the interstate, I was fortunate enough to be able to train two dogs and be certified in detecting narcotics. So we're going to have one of those on the crime suppression unit. Uh, they're going to be responsible for responding to citizens' complaints, to uh, patrolling in high-crime areas. You know, if we have a rash of burglaries, and say out in the Stedman area, then you know you may go through a roadblock out there at eleven o'clock in in the morning or before lunch, because that's when people are breaking in your homes. They're not doing it, you know, in the evenings. They're doing it while everybody's at work. So that's what my crime suppression unit is going to do um, to help address the supply. As far as the demand, you know, I, I put on my Facebook that it, it's going to take a lot of community involvement to, to help with that. Uh, I know from my experience in investigations and speaking with the uh, inmates, they're really open to talk to people at those times. When they sit in there and they get clean, they start thinking about their life and uh, whose lives they're uh, impacting with addiction. And, you know, I like to have faith-based and non-faith-based organizations come in and start uh, talking to these people and helping them with a, a re-entry program, helping them get jobs or housing and things of that nature. The education, I believe it's where we need to start. Um, I think Stacy touched on a little bit on uh, Monday when he talked to you. But, um, you know, actually I think it was President Nixon who uh, uh, declared the war on drugs back in like 1971 and then law enforcement followed up with a DARE program in 83 and then Red Ribbon Week in 1985. But it targets fifth graders. And so I want to start it from kindergarten all the way up to graduation and educate them all the way up. And so I know the school over here, the high school, uh, Harrison County School System, has a lot of, I think, five school resource officers. And you know, I believe they need to be there because they have a positive impact. You start talking to younger kids, they can, they can be a role model for them and uh, start educating them there and then, as they grow, we can change our program. The Sheriff's Association has a CHAMPS program, but it's pretty target-specific, and I want to be able to talk to them about what are the issues that's uh, actually happening right now. When you talk about educating, um, or, you know, talking about starting at kindergarten, how long till people actually start to see something, to, you know, where they see a difference in the drug? I mean, you know, are you starting with those kindergartners and you have to wait – 12 years to see something, or do you think that that can somehow spark um, some change before that? Well, I don't know. Yeah, and, uh, but I think a lot of our, our, our children in this county live in uh, 
um, some dire situation. Uh, and I think a lot of times that they need a positive role model in their life. Uh, so I hope that we start impacting them then. And so when they do go, later on, they grow up, that they don't make the same choices that their mom and dad made or their grandparents made. I mean, you're looking at a, a culture over here and a mindset that this is the way that it's, it's always been. And I want to try to break that cycle. Crime suppression unit, does that um, involve additional necessary additional funding? Are there grants available for that? Do you need to hire more uh, staff, more deputies? Well, I, I believe in robbing Peter to pay Paul, Colin. Um, I've looked at the budget, uh, that I've looked at what they've uh, spent. I've looked at the proposed budgets, requested budgets, all of that. Um, there's money there. I can make that happen. You know, I'm at the rearrange some positions to do that. Uh, the K-9 is expensive, but I've uh, got a way I can get that at uh, little to no cost uh, to the taxpayers. Uh, you're, you, said so, you're, uh, you said you're hearing that people are concerned about vehicles speeding and endangering lives. I've heard over as long as I've been here the last decade concerns that uh, I believe this is true. Harrelson County deputies, their vehicles are not equipped with radar detectors. I mean, is that something that's um, – can you implement that? Is it necessary to implement that? To well, slow down drivers. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know that they have radar. They don't, and I don't know what uh, what roads are approved through the state for as radar. And uh, to be honest, I'm not a fan of uh, speed traps. You know, catching someone who's running a little late to work. But I have noticed when I'm out campaigning that you will get run over in this county because people fly. So there is a need for speed detection. And with speaking with Chief Walker, they have to. Um, have a lot of high speed crashes we have to extract people out of vehicles and also on 120 we have three schools on this one highway and i live on 120 so people fly up and down it all the time so there's definitely a need for a radar over here and i'm I'm pretty sure the major highways would be approved as far as uh, your side roads you can use radar or laser Uh, the only requirement on that is a speed detection sign a warning sign and a speed limit sign so, yeah, there, there is a need for uh, speed detection just to, to slow people down, you know, whether it be a citation or just a warning. But people need to tend to slow down to cut back on some of these high-speed crashes we're having. City of Carrollton has a number of uh, tag readers strategically placed at the entrances and, and, and exits of the city. Um, and, and it's to identify people maybe coming in from other places if their car could have been used in a crime. Um, it'll recognize other things. Are you in favor of something like that? Maybe identifying you know, somebody who's wanted or a vehicle that's stolen in uh, different areas that would come into Harrelson County. Would you be in favor of something like that within the uh, boundaries of Harrelson County? Well, used to I had a undercover vehicle that was equipped with tag readers. It was about fourteen thousand dollars for that equipment, so it's it's kind of expensive to, to have that, but it is useful. Uh, let's say, as I spoke earlier, of the rash of burglars out in the state, and you know, if you had a, a vehicle out there with tag readers, you could go back and and look at it, or if you develop a suspect, you can get their tag number and go back and show where they've been, and then check your reports to see if uh, when you link them to that area during the time of that burglary. So, I'm in favor of it. It's maybe a funding issue that we have to work on, but. They do come in handy. Brian Finley is one of five candidates for sheriff in Harrelson County. He's our guest on this morning's Community Voice program. His website is brianfinleyforsheriff.com. And uh, if you read his website, he doesn't hold back on a lot of the things uh, he says there. So I encourage you to, to visit the website, brianfinleyforsheriff.com. And if you do have questions for Brian, we're going to post this program to the News Talk 1330 Facebook page at the conclusion of this program, probably later on this morning. And he and I talked. If you do put questions there, uh, he'll have a chance to look at it later on this afternoon, maybe early this evening, and uh, possibly get back to you with your questions. We're going to take our first break right now, Brian, and uh, come back. Community Voice brought to you by Tenor Health System and Oak Mountain Academy here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. Time right now is 844. At Oak Mountain Academy, our academic excellence shines through innovation and a personalized educational experience. Our pre-K 3 through 12th grade environment offers a family-oriented atmosphere. We are an independent school with faith-based values and an academy honor code. Our academic standards prepare our students for college and beyond. I'm Patrick Duran, Headmaster, inviting you to visit us on the mountain or at oakmountain.us. Come see how our warriors are creating legacies. 
Time right now is 846. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program, News Talk 1330 and FM 106.3. Also streaming live online at News Talk 1330.com. Interrupted there by an emergency alert. Those are sent throughout the whole state, and they do override any of your local programming, even if it's uh, you know a little further down south. But uh, they do in- in- uh, I'm sorry, issue an amber alert uh, just a short time ago. Back to the program. Our guest is Brian Finley. He's one of five candidates running for sheriff in Harrelson County. Appreciate him uh, joining us this morning over the uh, telephone. Brian, on your website, you do mention, uh, I would imagine that some candidates for sheriff are not announcing who they would have second in charge, have as their chief deputy um, at this point, because those people could actually be in other positions and, you know, should not have a successful campaign, it you know, could possibly affect their position. But you've announced Shane Spradlin, who works for uh, the Carroll County Sheriff's Office as your uh, chief deputy. Uh, you tell us a little bit about him. I did, and uh, you know, I put that out there two years ago. Whenever I uh, launched the website, I want the people of the county to know this is who you're going to get. This is what we're offering, and you know, this is our resume. Do you want to hire us? Uh, a little bit about Shane is I've known him before either one of us ever uh, got in law enforcement. He is originally from Fruithurst, Alabama, so do not hold that against him. <laughs> but his uh, he's lived his ent- entire adult life in Tallapoosa. He's married to Angel. They have a couple of kids and uh, three grandchildren. But uh, Shane's a sergeant over our aggressive criminal enforcement unit. It's the ACE unit. It's made up of uh, members from the sheriff's office, uh, Carrollton Police Department, and the University of West Georgia. Uh, they uh, investigate street-level drug dealers. Uh, he's been doing that about the last 13 years. And they uh, assist with complex investigation or some uh, investigators get them to come in and do surveillance or multiple interviews of suspects, things of that nature, or uh, drive-by shootings, anything of that, anything that's going to require extra manpower, they're there to assist them in that. Um, uh, one thing about Shane is his dedicated. His dedication is second to none. That's one of the reasons I chose him. Uh, he's highly trained in the in the drug field, which is our biggest problem. And just recently, uh, he and his unit, along with some of the other investigators, recovered, uh, I think it was 23 four-wheelers in seven days. You know, that's that's a lot of work. And that's getting out and getting after it to recover that many four-wheelers in that short of time frame. So uh, you go talking drugs and theft and things of that nature, you know, his record speaks for itself. Brian so that, that's why I chose him. Brian Finley, one of five candidates running for sheriff for Harrelson County. Election day is May the 19th. Early voting will begin uh, three weeks prior to that. And as of right now, election day is still going on on May the 19th. So we uh, are committed to keep bringing out these uh, candidates for all of the races here locally that are coming up. Uh, We'll be on that ballot again on uh, May the 19th. Harrelson County Commission, Board of Commissioners, recently approved what's being called a Second Amendment Sanctuary rule and uh, in, in summary it, uh, it suggests that the sheriff would not enforce any laws that come down from the state having to do with the second amendment this was in response to laws that were going up in other states or being discussed in other states uh, mainly virginia at that point have you read that resolution put out by the harrelson county commissioners and and what would your role in that be do you believe how would you would you support that resolution uh, you being a sheriff Absolutely. You hear a lot about the Second Amendment. I I hear that question a lot. But I will tell you, Colin, I'm pro-Constitution. From the 52 words in the preamble to the seven articles and the the 27 amendments, I'm for all of them. Uh, So I'm glad that they uh, adopted that uh, two-way sanctuary, basically saying they will not uh, provide any buildings or funding. But as a sheriff, your number one job is to protect the constitutional rights of your people. So in the, in the event the federal government wants to come in and try to take people's weapons from them, my response to this sheriff would be, they are a well-regulated militia, so good luck. You know, that, that's the way I look at that. You know, and as a sheriff, that's, that's our job, is, is to take people's uh, constitutional rights. Time right now is 8.50. Brian Finley, one of five candidates for sheriff in Harrelson County, our guest on this morning's program. Again, when this is complete, we'll post it up on the Newstalk1330.com website in podcast form little section uh, in the center of the page up towards the top that says podcasts and uh, this should be the the top uh, podcast when we do put it up this morning we'll also put it on the news talk 1330 wlbb facebook page later on um, this morning um, what if anything would you seek from the current administration um, as far as advice and input you know to talk about maybe 
maybe issues going on in Harrelson County. What uh, what will you seek from them if you take office as they're heading out? Well, there's there's things you know a lot of uh, how their 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 office operates. You know, of course, every sheriff's office uh, does some things a little different as far as who does what. And, you know, I don't who pays what bills, who does you know different roles that they have up there. I've heard the comment from I guess some people putting out there that I'm gonna come in and fire everybody that works for the sheriff's office. So I just want people to know that if you're doing your job, you have nothing to worry about. You know, I'm not one that's going to come in and fire everybody that works there. It makes no sense to me. Um, as far as uh, Sheriff Mixon and Chief McSwain go, uh, I wish them the best in their uh, retirement. I congratulate them on that and, you know, hope for them in the, any future endeavors they may have. Uh, you know, a lot of people, it's uh, easy to Monday morning quarterback any decisions people make, but. You know, I've walked in a lot of shoes at a sheriff's office. Being sheriff is one of them I have not walked in yet. So I'm not going to step back in Monday morning quarterback anything that that office has done. As far as providing information, uh, relevant information to the public from the sheriff's office and the media, uh, you know, we expect to get uh, important and accurate information out of the sheriff's office. Uh, when, when times are important, whether it's, you know, whether it's a crime that's happened, when you're seeking an individual, um, the media would expect to get that information and be able to share with the public as, as a trusted source for information. Um, who, who would be in charge of that? Would you bring somebody in off the streets who might have the gift of gab, or would it have to be a, <laughs> uh, a deputy who uh, has the actual, actual knowledge of what's going on? I actually have somebody in, uh, that would do that and be a public information officer. They are a uh, law enforcement officer. Uh, I don't, won't have anybody come in with a gift of gab, you know, this get to the point, you know, say what, tell what the issues are. Uh, I do believe in accountability. So uh, when I'm talking about the crown suppression unit, things of that nature, I'll release all those statistics out for uh, everybody to see. That way the community can hold me accountable as they're doing is what I say I'm going to do. And then put all that, put, put that out there as far as you and uh, needing information to release to the public, you know, I will have that public information officer who is currently in law enforcement now. I just, as you said earlier, some people's name you'll release and some you do not want to because of the uh, places they work now. Time right now is 8.53. Wrapping up our conversation with Brian Finley, one of five candidates for sheriff in Harrelson County. We're going to take our uh, final break and wrap up our interview with Brian right after this. Community Voice brought to you by Tender Health System and Oak Mountain Academy on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. I'm Senator Mike Dugan. Like many others, I've been quarantined because of exposure to the coronavirus. Our county and our region are facing an unprecedented threat from the COVID-19 virus. If we don't act now, thousands of our neighbors and loved ones will get sick and hundreds or more will be hospitalized. And there are only so many beds, ventilators, and other resources to care for the sick. Lives are on the line. Staying home is the only way to ensure you're not exposed to the virus and that you don't bring COVID-19 home to your loved ones. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay home. A well-rounded education includes much more than just academics. At Oak Mountain Academy, we encourage our students to find their niche in any of our 42 co-curricular opportunities. Over the past five years, we have brought home five state and 20 regional athletic titles. Our one-act play and literary teams continuously compete at the region and state level, and our academic teams bring home first place more than not. We are warriors creating legacies. To learn more, visit oakmountain.us. 8.55. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program. News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. I'm Colin Worthington. Our guest this morning, Brian Finley, one of five candidates for sheriff in Harrelson County. Election day is May the 19th. Early voting will take place uh, three weeks before then. We'll keep you posted to remind you when uh, all of that is coming up. Again, our guest this morning, Brian Finley. Carroll County has a re-entry program. It's, uh, It's nonprofit. It's not associated with the county necessarily although i think the government has the option of making a donation every year putting that in the budget can you see something like that uh is something like that necessary for harrelson county or does something like that exist yeah i don't know if it, if it exists or not and i do talk about the re-entry and, and that's why i say it's um uh community partnerships and uh, I, I needed a, a lot of assistance from the community on something like that um, i apologize i didn't hear the question but uh, one of the other things i'd like to touch on right quick before we leave is um Throughout the training, I was a general instructor and a firearm instructor. And 
I believe strong wind school safety is something I'm passionate about. I've been lucky enough at Carroll County to attend all of our school safety summits. Um, I would like to do that within Harrison County with the with the county schools and also the city schools and all first responders and make sure we're all on the same page in the event of a, an emergency. Because I feel if we fail to protect our children and our senior citizens, then we'll fail as a community. So school safety is something I would like to really improve on here in Harrison County as well. 857, Brian, you're going to have about two minutes here. Um, you know, say you have the opportunity to somebody just tuning in right now, and you have an opportunity to summarize your campaign and why they should pick you. Um, yeah, lay that out for us, please. Uh, well, I hope the citizens of Harrison County research all the candidates who are running. Um, because we're in crucial times in our county. Uh, we all bring different experiences and knowledge to the table, uh, but a sheriff's office is unique in our role and our responsibility. Uh, what I want our citizens to remember about me is I'm a man of my word. If I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. If I say I'm not going to do something, I'm not going to do it. Um, we have to, I believe we have to put programs in place to help our families and uh, kind of help break the cycle of addiction that we see here. Um, I believe the power of hope in the community uh, who can work with me and the other agencies and change the mindset of our, our county. Harrison County has always been my home, you know. I'm a son, I'm a brother, father, husband, and I have five kids. I'm sure one day I'll be a grandkid, uh, granddaddy. Uh, so I want to make Harrison County a safer place for our citizens and future grandkids and generations. So I'm asking the voters to believe in me, uh, my willingness to take risks, and the trust that Shane and I can bring the uh, uh, lasting change and the positive change that our county desperately needs. You know, my whole campaign slogan has been progress without change is impossible from the beginning. So I just ask the voters to vote for change and, and to let Ms. their next sheriff. And uh, it's past time for us to uh, move forward. You know, we got to stop being stagnant. So I just ask to vote for me on May the 19th or take advantage of early voting on April 27th if it's still going on or whatever they decide to do as far as election goes. Man, we'll keep our listeners. I, pre- I appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to come on today. Absolutely, Brian. We appreciate you accommodating us, you know, doing this over uh, the telephone. But, uh, yeah, thank you for joining us this morning. And thank you for listening to this morning's Community Voice program here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Again, Brian Finley, our guest this morning, one of five candidates running for sheriff in Harrelson County. Those other candidates, Chad Henderson, Ada Buchanan, the uh, chief of police over there. John Hutchison, also a sworn law enforcement officer. Wade Williams, a deputy sheriff in Harrelson County. And Stacey Williams is a police officer for the city of Carrollton. Stacey was on the program on Monday, so if you'd like to compare the first two candidates, you can do so by visiting the Newstalk1330.com website and uh, get you started there. On Friday, we're going to be interviewing Wade Williams, a third candidate. So I do encourage you to uh, tune in for that program on Friday at 830 if this race is of interest to you in Harrelson County. Right now, uh, time is 8.59. Stay tuned for national news coming up. We'll have local news at 9.02. And then Glenn Beck is on the radio right here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3, streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com.